welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So, we are looking at the properties of convex set or basically operations on convex sets that preserve convexity all right. Uh, let us continue our discussion, let us look at another important uh, operation that preserves convexity which is known as an affine function ok. So, the next important transformation that pre preserves convexity and this arises fairly frequently is what is known as an affine this is known as an affine function. For instance, um, what is an affine function? Now, if you have a vector that is for instance, let us say x bar is a vector, let us say this is your vector. Now, an affine function is a vector a function that is of the form A x bar plus B bar that is A is a matrix that is multiplied by trans matrix and translated by the vector b bar. So, this uh, basically this function of this form this is termed as a function of this form is termed as an affine function. Now, uh, under affine function now the interesting property or its relevance with respect to convex sets is that if S is convex, this implies that f of S that is an affine transformation applied on S and the resulting set f of S is convex ok. So, f of S implies affine transformation. affine transformation of S or affine transformation of all elements in S that also results in a convex set ok. Typically for instance, if you take a convex set, if you rotate it and translate it that is which corresponds to basically an affine transformation, the resulting set is also convex. Now interestingly, what one can also show that an affine precomposition also results in a convex set alright. So, what is the meaning of that? That is uh, f inverse s, if s is convex then f inverse of s is also convex. This implies, now what is f inverse of s? f inverse of s that is the inverse of the set under this affine precomposition is a set of all vectors x bar such that f of x bar belongs to S. This is known as an affine precomposition. You have f of s, which is affine composition. F inverse of s is the affine this is the affine precomposition. Uh, for instance, an application can be demonstrated as follows. Consider the following simple example. Uh, we have already seen a norm cone, let us go back to our illustration of the norm cone. And uh, what we have seen in the norm cone is that we have this vector x tilde which is of the form x bar x n plus 1 this is an n dimensional vector you have an n dimensional vector x bar and uh, another element n plus 1th element x n plus 1 and uh, the norm cone is basically described by the set norm of x bar is less than or equal to x n plus 1 uh, which basically implies that uh, norm x bar square is less than or equal to x square of n plus 1, which basically implies that x bar transpose x bar is less than or equal to x square of n plus 1. 
correct uh, because remember norm x bar square is simply x bar transpose x bar. So, x bar transpose le x bar less than or equal to x square n plus 1 this is an alternative representation of the norm core. Now, let us see what its affine pre composition corresponds to. So, now let us consider x bar equals p times another vector v bar and x n plus 1 equals c bar transpose v bar. So, I can write x tilde equals this vector which is already we have seen x bar x n plus 1 this is equal to the matrix P stacked matrix P C bar transpose times V bar. So, this is your matrix A B bar is 0. So, this is an affine transformation correct or rather this is an affine function. Okay. Now, we want to find the set of all F inverse of set. So, this is our convex set S. Now, F inverse of S will be all S or will be all uh, let us say V bar such that F of V bar belongs to S implies. Now, if you look at F of V bar belongs to S implies well we already seen x bar transpose x bar less than or equal to x square n plus 1. Now, substituting for x bar and x n plus 1, we have x bar is well p times v bar transpose into x bar which is p times v bar is less than or equal to x square of n plus 1 that is c bar transpose v bar. Remember x n plus 1 is c bar transpose v bar square of that which basically implies that v bar transpose p transpose p into v bar is less than or equal to c bar transpose v bar whole square which basically implies v bar transpose p tilde v bar is less than or equal to c bar transpose v bar whole square. Okay. And this matrix P tilde is defined as P transpose P. And you can see this is a positive semi definite matrix. So, now what you can see is this set all right, V bar which satisfies this by the property of the affine pre composition, right. Since x bar, correct, uh, since we said f of v bar that is x bar belongs to S that is the norm cone. So, the v bar which is the affine pre composition uh, which is basically uh, uh, which is the set corresponding to the affine pre composition all right uh, that also forms a uh, that also forms a convex set. So, this set v bar such that f v bar belongs to S which is characterized by this relation also forms set of all v bar satisfying this also forms this also forms a convex set okay and in fact this is a convex cone this is you can think of this as a general expression or a convex cone given by the affine pre composition. Okay. All right. So, these are very interesting properties. The first one is rather simple and uh, uh, which is basically says that the intersection of two sets if two sets are convex or if a finite number of sets if or if any number of sets is convex their intersection is also convex and further uh, if you consider an affine function f and a convex set S then both F S and F inverse S are also convex. Okay. All right. uh, let us now move on to another interesting aspect and let us revisit the concept of norm balls that we have seen previously.
we had seen this concept of a norm ball. Okay, what is a norm ball? Now remember the norm ball was defined as follows. I have the two norm. This is also known as the L2 norm, which you can write as magnitude x1 square plus magnitude x2 square plus so on magnitude x n square. This is the L 2 norm and the corresponding L 2 norm ball that is given as norm of x bar that is the L 2 norm is less than or equal to for instance r let us say equal to 1. Okay. So, this is your L 2 norm ball and we have also seen that uh, this L 2 norm ball for instance in two dimensions this corresponds to a this is the L 2 norm ball which is basically equal to a circle slash sphere in n dimensions it is a sphere. Okay. So, this is your L 2 norm ball. Okay. Now, in general we would also we one can define now in general one can define what is known as an L p norm what is this L p norm? If you take a vector x bar, the L p norm indicated by this p here is basically given as magnitude x 1 to the power of p plus magnitude x 2 to the power of p plus magnitude x n to the power of p. Uh, whole raise to the power of 1 over p. Now, you can see if you set p equal to 1, p equal to 2, it reduces to reduces to the L, L, L 2 norm. Therefore, it is general. So, for p equal to 2, it reduces to magnitude x 1 square plus magnitude x 2 square, so on up to magnitude x n square 1 over 2 that is square root of the whole thing, which is nothing but the L 2 norm. Now, this can be now uh, used to construct other very interesting norms. For instance, the L 1 norm, which is one of the most fundamental and widely applied. The L 1 norm is uh, norm of x bar 1. You can see that simply reduces to magnitude x 1 plus magnitude x 2 that is each to the power of p which is 1 plus magnitude x n whole to the power of 1 over p which is again 1. So, this is simply magnitude x 1 plus magnitude plus magnitude x n this is the L 1 norm. And the L 1 norm sphere or the L 1 norm ball this is given by norm x bar of 1 less than or equal to 1. Uh, this is your L 1 norm ball and for instance to uh, look at this let us consider a 2D example. Consider a 2 dimensional case if x bar equals x 1 plus x 2 uh, norm x bar less than equal to 1. This implies magnitude x 1 plus magnitude x 2 less than equal to 1. Okay. Now, how to find this norm ball? You can consider four cases. One is x 1 comma x 2 both greater than equal to 0 in which case magnitude x 1 is nothing but x 1 magnitude x 2 is x 2 
less than equal to 0. So, this corresponds to the first quadrant. Second quadrant we have x 1 less than 0, x 2 greater than equal to 0. This corresponds to the case magnitude x 1 is minus x 1. So, this will be minus x 1 plus x 2 less than equal to I am sorry this is not 0, this is 1 less than equal to 1. This is the second quadrant. Then in the third quadrant, you will have both are negative, you will have minus x 1 minus x 2 less than equal to 1 and in the fourth quadrant, you will have x 1 because x 1 is greater than equal to 0 minus x 2 because x 2 is less than 0 less than equal to so, these are the four cases and if you plot it, you will find something very interesting. You plot the L1 norm ball and what you will observe is if you look at the first quadrant that corresponds to x1 plus x2 less than equal to 1 which is basically this region x1, x2, x1, comma x2 greater than equal to 0 and x 1 plus x 2 less than equal to 1. Okay. And uh, similarly, this will be the corresponding region in the second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant and therefore, if you look at this, what you will observe is that this is the region corresponding to the L1 norm ball. It is very interesting, it is very different from the L2 norm ball in the sense that you can see that it has pointed edges, something very interesting. So, you can see and this simple observation which means it is non differentiable. If you see, if you observe it, this simple observation leads to in fact profound implications. So, if you look at the L2 norm ball, you can see this is smooth, it has no kinks or edges. So, the L2 norm is something that is very amenable for analysis that is it can be uh, easily differentiated and so on. Whereas, if you look at the L1 norm ball, something very interesting that is a square with the diagonals along the axis. So, it is a tilted square and being a square, it has these sharp edges at which it is not differentiable. So, this is something that is very interesting, it is a very interesting shape. So, this is not what you think of when you think of a, so this is basically your tilted square okay? and uh, it is 90 degrees, these angles are 90 degrees, it is symmetric. And, uh, the diagonals, the diagonals are aligned with the axis or diagonals are or on the axis that is your x and y axis or your x 1 and x 2 axis. Okay. So, this is the L 1 norm ball. Now, related to this is this notion, now we have seen the L 1 norm ball. Now, something very interesting is what is known as the L infinity norm, and that is what happens when P tends to infinity. So, the L infinity norm, that is norm of x bar infinity that is defined as limit P tending to infinity norm of x bar which is limit p tending to infinity under root of mag not under root this is magnitude x 1 raised to the power of p plus magnitude x 2 raised to the power of p plus magnitude x n 
raised to the power of p whole to the power of p which can be basically shown to be magnitude of mod x i 1 less than equal to i less than equal to n which is basically simply the maximum of magnitude x 1, magnitude x 2, so on up to magnitude of x n. So, this is the L infinity norm, something that is very interesting. So, this is the L infinity norm. And now, one can correspondingly derive the norm ball corresponding to L infinity norm, the norm ball and that is naturally given as norm of x bar infinity less than or equal to 1. So, this is an interesting norm. So, norm of uh, a vector, the infinity norm is simply the maximum of the absolute values of the components of that vector. And the L infinity norm uh, ball is basically simply uh, norm, the infinity norm of a vector, the region corresponding to the infinity norm of a vector x bar being less than or equal to, for instance, any radius. In this particular case, you can say the radius is equal to 1. All right. So, we will stop here and continue with this discussion in the subsequent module. Thank you very much. Thank you.